Well, it is at 7.12 this morning. We're so lucky to have three special guests waking up early to be with us this morning. You see Laura, Nikki, and Neil joining us. Uh, talking about a special initiative that you guys are working on. It's a podcast that's focused specifically on Winnebago County. Tell me about that. Sure. Well, the <laughs> podcast is called Learning with Laura Youngblood, and it's a nine-part series that focuses on domestic violence within Winnebago County. And so we really tried to give listeners a behind the scenes look at the criminal justice system and all the other community collaborators that go um, into addressing uh, domestic violence within our city. And so Laura is our host and Neil was the director of the podcast. Why do you guys feel like the podcast was the best way to go? We see a lot of different efforts. Why podcast? Well, um, this kind of came up when we were talking about it uh, originally is a podcast, you know, you can put your headphones in and you can be sitting at home and no one really knows what you're listening to. And so it's something that like maybe if you're dealing with domestic violence, you can listen to it almost like incognito at home where if you're dealing with a situation with a spouse and they're there, like it's not like you're sitting on your phone watching like a tutorial video. And a lot of this stuff is, is a lot to digest all at once. And so a podcast is, is really palatable in, in, that, in that format. And so some of the focus is, you know, we run things during the news. You guys are seeing everything firsthand. What do you think is probably one of the most surprising things um, from this podcast or things that you've seen or heard that you think more people should know about? I think one of the big things with the podcast is that it takes away some of the stigma and the drama of um, seeking help, especially with domestic violence. Um, my goal as the host was to put things in very simple, basic terms. So if you're someone who's going through the system or you're supporting someone who's going through the system, you can understand it in basic terms and hopefully it takes away some of that um, unknowingness. So I know our numbers have been going up. A Family Peace Center is saying it's almost a good thing because it means that more people are trying to get help. And what are you seeing from women in our community and, and men too? Well, I think part of what you just said is that people are talking about domestic violence more. I mean, I've been doing this work a long time, and I think this is really the most community attention that we've ever given this issue. And like Laura said, really removing stigma. But also a goal of this podcast was to help people better understand what happens when you call the police for domestic violence? What happens if someone's arrested? And then what happens when that case finishes and you maybe need community resources to really take out mm -hmm. some of that mystery around that and to unpack a very complicated system? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think more and more we're increasing the conversation, which can only help survivors and families get the services they need. And it seems like that too. Now, we just ran a story about the Gabby Petito case. Things are more in the national spotlight. Uh, what are you guys seeing just on your end with that? I mean, that we're seeing more of the focus um, on domestic violence nationally. We know it is a focus here locally. I think it just speaks to the conversation we just had is that the more attention small communities or bigger communities put around this, the more that that's going to filter up nationwide. I mean, um, our federal government does do a lot of work. This, pro this project was supported by our federal government to really uh, send this message across the nation that survivors' needs are important and we need to hold offenders account accountable and that domestic violence is one of the leading causes of injury to women in the United States. And we'll run numbers. We just talked about, you know, 40% of the calls and things like that. But you guys are actually seeing the people behind these numbers. What is it like for women in our community who are coming to you for help? Yeah, I mean, do you want to talk about maybe what you learned about survivors through the podcast? Yeah, so um, I, one of the big things I learned is when a survivor actually comes to get help, it's usually not a first instance situation. It's usually multiple times, and it's not necessarily a big act of dramatic violence that does it. it there's a buildup and there's an escalation to it. And it takes a, a lot for a survivor to come forward because they have learned how to survive in that situation. They know how to survive in that abusive situation. They don't necessarily know how to survive outside of that. So there's some hesitation sometimes to speak up and some unknowingness. So we're really hoping with this podcast is that there are resources available to the survivors to move forward. And I like the idea, like you said, you can put the headphones on, just listen to it if you want to be discreet with it. We appreciate all of the work all three of you guys are doing in our community. Where can people find the podcast too? They can find it on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, okay. also Google Podcasts, and then you can um, go to learningwithlaurayoungblood.buzzsprout.com and you can find the podcast there as well. Pretty much anywhere. Anywhere you can find normal <laughs> podcasts, you yeah. can find it there. Thank you guys for being mm -hmm. with us this morning. We appreciate it, all three of you guys. Uh, all your headlines coming up next here on Eyewitness News.